Hello everyone and welcome to the Double Meal Dad Kitchen. I'm Mike Sladek, the Double Meal Dad. Uh, the concept of DMD is a simple one. How can I stretch my dollar farther uh, and use food, get flavorful food, buy more quantities of things that are on sale and be able to make different types of meals, uh, i.e. the double meal. Today we've chosen pot roast. Many of you like me are busy and uh, don't have a lot of time on your hands to do a lot of cooking. So when we cook pot roast, a lot of times we'll say, okay, for example, here's a three pound pot roast. And I made a very simple preparation of that. I simply used a crock pot, got myself a little Chicago Weber steak seasoning, put it on top of there, chopped up an onion, and got myself a nice bottle of our local beer here in Texas, the Lone Star Bach beer. And of course, I just got it all set before I went off to work this morning. Set the crock pot at low and 10. Come home from work, and you've got a delicious meal of pot roast ready to serve to your family. Now, that's the first meal. And with that first meal, you can do a lot of different things. Uh, we can serve it with mashed potatoes, and I've made some mashed potatoes back here. You can serve it with some frozen vegetables or grill up some vegetables when you get home. All this to make your life a lot simpler uh, when you get home after work and you've got the family, you've picked the kids up, you want to make your job a little bit easier in getting meals ready and not always have to run out and go somewhere else uh, or go to fast food or something of that nature. So I've got a beautiful pot roast here, all cooked up, all ready to go. I've got some onions on it. I'm just going to take it and put it in my pot here. So. For this recipe, we're using pot roast. And again, the concept is, if I'm going to cook a pot roast, why not go ahead and cook two at the same time? You're going to go ahead and put it in the crock pot, or you're going to put it in the oven. And by the way, I'll be posting the recipe for the pot roast on the YouTube site. So you will have all of the ingredients. Like I said, it's really simple. Bottle of beer, some um, seasoning, one onion chopped up. Not hard at all, very simple to put together. Um, as long as you're going to turn on the crock pot or the oven, why not go ahead and make a little bit extra? And from that, the leftovers, we're going to make now our shepherd's pie. So the shepherd's pie is really easy to put together. Again, this is something, you've got the leftover meat, you can come home, throw this together in 10 to 15 minutes, go ahead, make sure the kids are you know, not destroying the house or anything of that nature. I'm going to start very simply, let me get this out of the way, we're going to use this juice by the way from the pot roast here to make a little uh, gravy for it uh, later. I'm just going to chop up a few, uh, a few mushrooms here, get these started, and uh, we're going to use this as kind of our vegetable inside the shepherd's pie. So it's really simple. The ingredients are, of course, our leftover pot roast, I've got some already cut up here. So we're going to go ahead and get this started. Just a little bit of olive oil. I know some of you are trying to cut some of the fat out of your diets. Not a problem if you are. You can use olive oil or you can use butter. One tablespoon of butter only has like 16 calories in it. So you're not really hurting yourself if you use that. Let's go ahead and get this going. While we're doing that, I'm also going to cut up some corn on the cob. Our, uh, our local grocery store this last week had six ears of corn on the cob for a dollar. So, I mean, you can't beat the price. And if you're going to go ahead, let's say you have a family of four, you're going to buy four ears of corn, or maybe you're going to buy two ears of corn and cut them in half, why not buy yourself double that amount? Go ahead and you're going to turn the grill on and roast them, or you're going to boil them, or you're going to put them in the oven. Take the leftover cobs that you have, and it's really simple. You're going to make cream corn, or you're going to make some something for a meal. You just want to cut that corn right off the cob. And we're going to use this now in our recipe. Instead of buying canned corn, which has a lot of salt in it, or uh, you know, buying frozen corn is not too bad for you. Uh, but instead of buying that, you, know, you can save yourself a lot of money by as you go through that circular, looking at the different things that are on sale, and just doubling up. And the beauty is that I don't feel like I'm eating pot roast two days in a row, you know. Like a lot of times we have leftovers, we almost feel like 
Thanksgiving, like we eat turkey for an entire month after, uh, after Thanksgiving. The concept here is to take the same type of meat but make very different flavored meals and therefore our families um, enjoy the, the meals more. Let me give you one other tip. I know this looks a little funny here, but go and get yourself a one pound plastic bag. And just right on there for soup. Anytime you cut an onion, here's an example, I cut an onion earlier, took the skins off it, right? Or in this case, I just trimmed off the corn. Go ahead and throw that, those pieces in that bag. And just keep this in your freezer. And you'll start, and you'll have one or two items in here, and then you'll add a couple more items. And then once you've got the bag full like I do here, and we'll save this for another time, just go ahead and make yourself some vegetable broth out of it. Great base for soups. Uh, we're going to do some etouffee later on, uh, and some other videos, and make a whole bunch of different things. And much more uh, nutritious for you. No sodium at all. You get to control the sodium. So a great little tip. I'm going to go ahead and throw this in the freezer so I don't uh, forget to do that. I've now got my corn. I've got my mushrooms heating up here. While that's going on, I'm just going to scoop this up real quick. And then I'm going to go ahead and start shredding my, uh, my uh, shepherd's pie, my pot roast there. Uh, while I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and turn the oven on to 350. So, excuse me while I start our oven over here. And I'm just going to grab a couple of forks, and this is really easy. Just grab yourself a couple of forks. go ahead and take that leftover pot roast that we slow roasted and go ahead and shred that up. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Just go ahead and shred that pot roast up. Now, it, this, there's no pressure in this. If you want to put it on a cutting board and cut it up, you can do that. The key here is that we're just making a nice base at the bottom of our pan to hold the meat. Now, shepherd's pie, traditionally made with lamb or a ground meat, but uh, the whole concept in Double Meal Dad is to kind of think outside the box when it comes to making the meats that you're using. You get yourself a good flavor, um, good ingredients, and uh, kind of switch things up a little bit. Okay, I've got that all chopped up. Go ahead and show you what that looks like. I've got a nice base at the bottom there, and you can see the, the meat all set up. And now I'm just going to build Kind of like a casserole. I'm going to build a casserole. So the key thing here is I've got some shredded cheese. We've just got some of our local brand shredded cheese there. Uh, I'm going to do, of course, the mushrooms and the corn. And uh, I'm just going to heat this corn up just a little bit. Now this would be the time if you like to season. Uh, you can season this however you like. I typically recommend just a little bit of salt and pepper, some fresh ground pepper we're going to put in there. Just a little bit of that. Again, if you're uh, controlling your salt intake, we can just do a little bit for flavor uh, in there. We just want a little bit, kind of help some of the vegetables lose a little bit of their, their moisture in there. And then very simply, we're going to build our vegetables on top and then our cheese, and then we're going to cover this with shepherd's pie. So we have to cover it with mashed potatoes. Now, I made some mashed potatoes earlier. Uh, by the way, no pressure if you don't have time to make your own mashed potatoes. Uh, go ahead and stop by the store and pick up a lot of the stores are doing a great job of making mashed potatoes for you. Or even if you have to use the box, go ahead and use the box. Again, uh, we don't judge anybody at the Double Meal Dad Kitchens. Let me show you another trick. You probably have gotten one of these for a wedding. It's been sitting in a box somewhere in the back. Uh, Maybe you're one of those uh, industrious people that tries to make an apple pie around Thanksgiving or around Christmas time. God bless you. I can't, uh, I can't bake at all. Uh, my wife is a fantastic baker, but I, I don't have that skill set. So, uh, but you're looking at this thing, an apple peeler core, and you're saying, what can I do with this? Because it just sits in my drawer. Some of you may have already sold yours on eBay. Uh, here's a little trick for you. We all hate to peel potatoes. Use your apple peeler core 
And watch how simple this is. Just put your potato on there. Go ahead and put it in there. And just start to turn it. And what's going to happen now is it's going to peel all of the potato skin off of your potato. And it's going to slice your potato nice and sliced for you. And now you can just drop it in your water and go ahead and boil it. Then the, the core of the potato, obviously this is still good. So you can just cut off the ends if you don't want the skin or if you want to leave the skin, make yourself a little bit of dirty mashed potato. You can do that as well. You can cut these and make little medallions on them, out of them. You can fry those up, make little crispers out of them. You can also just add them in with the other potato here and make that as part of your mashed potato. So really neat little trick and it gets this out of the cupboard and gives you something to do with it. I'm going to go ahead and set this down here. I'll throw you one other little tip. So, of course, I boned all of my, or uh, skinned all of my potatoes earlier. Well, I said bone there. We're going to do a chicken show later, and I'm going to show you guys how to cut up a chicken the right way. So there, there's our apple peel of core. I'm just going to put that out of the way. I've got some skins here from earlier in the day from making my mashed potatoes, and uh, these are delicious fried up. So if you have yourself a little baby fry or mini fryer, just take these, fry them up, and then when they come out, a little cayenne pepper or some salt on them, and they're delicious. We'll probably cook those up a little bit later. Okay, this is almost done. I'm going to go ahead and just use my gravy ladle here, get a little of that good pot roast flavor, break up some of that corn that I had in there. Very simple, not, not hard to do. You can tell we've taken less than five minutes. There we go. That's all we're going to do. We're just going to cover this right with the corn and the mashed potato and the corn and the mushrooms right there. Let me get this out of the way so I don't hurt anybody with that. Now, I'm going to keep this going. And uh, remember what I said, I'm going to make a little gravy out of there. I'll show you. I'm also a big fan of not having to use uh, multiple pans so that there's cleanup is much easier around the DMD kitchen. So I've just got myself some, you can use whatever kind you like. I've got some sharp cheddar here, just happened to be what I had in the refrigerator. Again, the deal here is, you know, we don't want to try to go out and have to spend a lot of money. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some shredded cheddar on there. Could be uh, jalapeno jack cheese if you like it spicy. Uh, if you're more of a provolone or a Swiss person, you can buy whatever you like. And there we go. So now I've cleaned out the, ref the refrigerator from that. I'm going to go ahead and turn this down a little bit, and I'm going to make a roux in just a second here. Let me go ahead and get the mashed potatoes out. So I'm going to turn that off, just to get the heat off of that for just a second while I go ahead and uh, get these mashed potatoes served up here. So again, this was really simple. Uh, my recipe for mashed potatoes is I had about 10 uh, large, eh, medium-sized mashed potatoes. And uh, I boiled them through, as you saw, with my technique there with the apple peeler core. And then I, uh, uh, when they were done, I drained the water out of them. Very, very simple. Just use the lid to drain the water out of them. And then uh, half a stick of butter and about a quarter to a half a cup of heavy cream. Now, again, I know some of you are sitting there going, oh my gosh, butter and heavy cream. Uh, as my wife likes to say, everything in moderation. So if you think that the heavy cream is too much, uh, certainly you can substitute it for skim milk. We're just trying to get a little bit of liquid in here to keep the mashed potato from being stiff. And that's a good little trick. Um, one other thing is I don't use a beater. Some people like to use beaters for their, uh, for their mashed potatoes. I'm a big fan of the old-fashioned way, just using a masher. And if if you've cooked your potatoes enough, you should have no problem hand mashing the uh, potatoes. They won't be, they're not that, they're not that hard to push down if you, uh, if you use that. So, good news for me, I got a little extra mashed potato here, so I could use that for something else. That's whole concept of the double meal dance. We're gonna put that aside right there. Now you see our shepherd's pie is done. Okay, so we got home from work. Video's probably been going all of ten minutes. We got home from work 10 minutes ago. We can now 
put this in the oven and bake it off for about 35 to 40 minutes in a 350 degree oven. So I've got my oven at 350. I'm going to go ahead and put my shepherd's pie. Remember, everything in there is basically cooked. So you're really not doing anything except getting those flavors to mix together. Those flavors now all mixed together. You can open yourself a cold one. Mm. Get yourself a nice cold beer while you're waiting. Or uh, today we've decided to serve a little Penny Black. Uh, this is Mama Rose's favorite uh, wine. So we're going to open some of this up and get that going. While that's going, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to make um, I'm going to make a little roux for our gravy. So uh, the, the process with a roux is real simple. One tablespoon of butter to one tablespoon of flour, that gets your roux going. And down here in the south, people are very particular about their roux and how they make their roux. Uh, the longer you let your roux cook, so I'm just going to get one tablespoon, that's about a tablespoon. Remember there's eight tablespoons in uh, one stick of butter, so every one-eighth of the stick is your tablespoon there. Then I'm going to come over here with a tablespoon of flour, and I'm just going to go ahead and measure that out, and that will get going on my roux there. And then I've got a non-stick pan here, so I'm going to get a wood spoon out, and we're just going to mix this up so you can see I'm just kind of breaking up the fats in there and getting them to mix with the flour. Break down that flour. We don't want anything that's too floury tasting. And again, the darker color you get in your roux, the richer flavor. But again, it's just like people like, some people like their bacon cooked a lot more and some people like their bacon cooked a lot less. <laughs> you don't have to overcook it if you don't want to, but some people like that little toasty flavor that's in there. So the more you want it toasted, the longer you're going to let it cook. Now we're going to just watch our heat here because we don't want to burn the butter. You want to burn flavor. You just want a uh, kind of a caramely roasted flavor in there. We're trying to have those sugars caramelize in there and make sure that that flour dissipates. Now the only real way to get that flour to dissipate all the way is we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this up to temp once we get our juice in there. So I'm going to put cup of liquid in there. That may be a little bit more than a cup, but that's okay. We're just, we can let it cook off. So now I'm going to let it get really hot. And that heat, the bubbling, is what's going to cause this to thicken up. So we're going to go ahead and, and let that go. <clears throat> and once that gets up to temp, like I said, if it's still a little too liquidy for you, all you have to do is just let it cook off, simmer down, That'll get a little thickness to you. Well, that's it for the first show of the Double Meal Dad. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, I'll be posting the recipes for both the pot roast and shepherd's pie uh, on the link on the YouTube page. Uh, write me an email. Let me know what you thought of this. Let me know if you have some other ideas. Uh, and we're going to be doing some more videos coming your way. So look forward to hearing from you. Take care. Welcome back to the Double Meal Dad. The shepherd's pie is all done. We've got it completed, so we're pulling it out of the oven now. You can see it just got a nice light brown on top there. Got a nice coloring. Remember what I told you about those potato skins, those leftover potato skins. I just took my little fry basket out right here, put in a little bit of vegetable oil, just a little Crisco pure vegetable oil, put that in there, set it at 350. Nice and crispy. Now you can use this. You can uh, go ahead and garnish the top of your shepherd's pie with this, or you can cut it and serve it on a serve it on a plate, and then garnish the top of it. And then we went ahead and took that flour and butter. We made a nice roux out of it. Remember, we added that gravy there, and now we've got a nice thick gravy. So we're going to go ahead and serve this up. Ladle it right on top of that shepherd's pie. I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of that shepherd's pie out and show you what that looks like. Grab a plate here. Grab a nice big spoon. Get my mitts out of the way there. So we're going to 
going to go ahead and just cut right into that shepherd's pie. Go all the way down to the bottom so we get all that meat and all that corn. And there we've got a nice serving of the shepherd's pie. We're going to go ahead and put a few more of these right on top of here. Just a little bit of crisp on top. And then we're going to ladle in some of this good gravy right here. Right on top of that. Real simple meal. Like I said, folks, didn't take very long to make. You saw me go through the process. And there we go. The Double Meal Dad Shepherd's Pie. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you back in the Double Meal Dad kitchens. Take care, y'all.